Regardless of what you do, regardless of how you eat, regardless of how you train, regardless of how you sleep, you will never look like Daisy. It's, I was about to say, obviously it's Tuesday, it's time for another video, but that'll be a lie. It's probably Monday or Thursday. I'm gonna say it's probably Thursday today, so it's time for another video. It's a slightly different one, and I say slightly different because although it's someone I have spoken about previously, who obviously you are aware of based on the title of the video, it's a topic I don't really spend a lot of time addressing. Usually a lot of my videos are training based, whereas this video is a bit more nutrition based. A couple of these videos have been popping up on my YouTube recommended a lot recently, and I saw it, I was like, you know what, this probably needs addressing. A few of you watching this video probably came from the video I did on Daisy a few months ago actually. So now we're going to approach the nutrition and diet side of things a bit. Obviously before we get on with the video you know what has to occur. I try and wear a new piece of headwear in every one of my videos I do. Regarding the backstory of this piece of headwear there isn't one. Daisy mentioned chicken in a video and I figured you know what two and two together equals 27. You can't even see it. Look, so basically it's a chicken on it's a chicken on my head, you know? It makes it look like I've got long blonde locks. I am six foot three, so that's probably why the chicken is gone. But now the headwear is on, it's time to crack on with the video. And we're gonna look at two or three videos specifically today. Obviously the title immediately triggers me. The thumbnail is nothing too crazy, but the title is obviously triggering. The more and more I do YouTube, the more and more I begin to understand that clickbaity thumbnails and titles are quite necessary in the algorithm these days, which is unfortunate. What I do prefer is when disclaimers are maybe given throughout videos, at the start of videos or somewhere. Just to clarify before we crack on with it, I'm not a dietitian, I'm a qualified fitness professional. I speak from personal experience, personal research and personal application. I have multiple degrees, but none of which are in the realm of like nutrition and that side of things. So this video very much speaks about Daisy's eating habits and how it helps her achieve what she claims to be a small waist and big butt. Eating certain foods will not suddenly enhance the growth of your glutes, nor will it shrink your waist. Eating food, obviously the amount of food, etc, etc, will basically alter whether you're in a calorie deficit or surplus or maybe at maintenance. That will then influence whether you gain weight or lose weight or maintain weight, which then will then show are you more defined because you've lost weight therefore maybe your waist has shrunk and your glutes have maintained size have you gained weight because you're in a bulk therefore you've gained a bit of muscle but perhaps a bit of fat as well therefore your glutes have probably grown and your waist may have grown as well so many factors i want some of this this is fire good carbs for the booty don't like that kind of brown rice so not gonna do that next thing i need some chicken and chicken is good protein that your body can absorb so you can build your butt. Obviously I know it's very simplified but it's nice to see that Daisy is saying you know carbs are kind of important. A lot of influencers are very much like oh don't eat carbs don't do this. I'm not really a big fan of cutting out any macronutrient personally. I'm more a fan of altering macronutrient ratios. Again it's very simple information it's very simplified terminology but I do appreciate how what Daisy is saying isn't wrong. I get that this isn't an educational channel. Even a bit of basic information saying you know what surplus for this, deficit for this, this is why I have this. Just basic stuff would be appreciated because the issue I have with these types of videos especially this one the title although for clickbait purposes implies that if you do what Daisy is doing here and you eat how she is eating you will achieve her result and that also implies that you will look like her. So it's safe to assume that the majority of Daisy's audience are women or those who identify as female. I think it's also safe to assume that she probably has a fair amount of younger subscribers. So for that reason I'm going to hit you some raw source and some facts that you probably don't want to hear but I think you need to hear. Regardless of what you do, regardless of how you eat, regardless of how you train, regardless of how you sleep, you will never look like Daisy. Daisy looks like Daisy, you look like you. People experience different results, people's bodies are shaped differently, there are so many factors to consider. You are given a genetic hand that you have to work with and I think the sad reality is in many cases in this day and age so many people are trying to achieve the look of somebody else rather than trying to just achieve the look of themselves when you've got things like TikTok, YouTube and Instagram blowing up where everyone is pushing this highlight real content where they're showing you the best bits but not the real bits and encouraging you to do certain things to look how they look etc etc it's just such a shame that people follow that path rather than just saying you know what 
I'm going to do this, but not to look like them, but to look like an even better version of myself. That's not to say the version of yourself is bad. Regardless how much progress you've made personally, physically, whatever it may be, we can always do better. Content that essentially implies that you can look like someone else is so marketable. That's really going to hinder the movement of body positivity, in addition to potentially negatively impacting the mental health of those consuming this content. Again, this is not Daisy's fault at all. This is merely an observation and an opinion based on the industry as a whole and almost the world as a whole at this stage. Even if you take nothing else away from this video, I just want you to know that you should try and aspire to look like the best version of yourself that you can be. Oh! You know, he's not here for the pep talk. At the end of the day, you need to learn to become comfortable in your own skin and you need to learn to do the things that make you happy and enhance your life rather than hinder your life. That is also another question actually that you guys had. Um, do I lift weights? Yes, I definitely lift heavy weights for sure. It's nice to see, although maybe not as much as I personally would like, it's great to see that Daisy is saying, you know, I do actually lift heavy weights. Some of her workouts may lead you to question that as I have covered previously, but we know Daisy does lift weights. I've seen videos of her resistance training. It's a shame she doesn't maybe promote that a bit more, but it's good to see that she is acknowledging that yes, I do lift heavy weights and hopefully informing her audience that lifting weights isn't a bad thing. It's a good promotion of resistance training. I must interrupt you very quickly, just to state, if you are liking the video thus far, and like my puppy, who doesn't like my hat, I would really appreciate 300 likes on the video, as would Truffle. It lets me know that you like the videos and want to see more of them. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you did subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me and it means a lot to my, my little boy here. And at the end of the video, I'll answer comment question of the week. So if you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, drop it down below in the comment section, and I should do so. Thanks, I appreciate you. We'll get back to talking about Daisy. What I eat today is just what works for me. Every single body is different, so what works for me might not work for you. I usually intuitive eat, so I don't have like a strict, su well, I, I don't know, let's see. I kind of like intuitive eat mixed with counting macros. Again, not bad information. Obviously, it's great to see in this video, she is saying, I eat for me, this is how I do it. Doesn't mean you will achieve the same results, etc., etc. Again, I wish she was a bit more prominent throughout other videos. And it's also good to see that she speaks about eating intuitively. Personally, I follow macros because that's how I like to do things. But you may not, you may prefer eating intuitively. The best diet for you is the one you can remain most consistent with. You have to do what works best for you, not what works best for somebody else. Sure, you can get advice and maybe a bit of guidance from other people, maybe learn a few things and apply them to yourself but trial and error is key right now i'm trying to get a little bit leaner in general just because i feel a lot better when i'm leaner so like i said i've been incorporating some cardio and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to eat a carb before my workout and then a carb after my workout then i've been cutting out one carb throughout the day so here she's speaking about obviously chucking carbs before and after workout there are so many different ways to approach this when essentially structuring macros fats and proteins are the only two macronutrients you actually need to survive so those are the ones that it's almost when you're in a deficit and you have to take something away from something i.e take away a macro source or some of a macro source to reduce your calories it's usually easiest to take away from carbs once your fat and protein are at a good level we feel like you know i can't really drop these any further then you start chipping away at the carbs so here she's saying pre and post workout she has some carbs if you are limited for carbs I do think putting your carbs around workout is a great way of approaching things. There are so many ways you can approach it, but that is an effective means of doing so, in my opinion. As she stated, she wants to get leaner. Therefore, she said she's dropping a carb meal. That's likely because her fat and protein are at a good level for her, and she needs to enter a calorie deficit somehow. Therefore, again, it's easier to drop some carbs. I'm gonna um, actually film my ab video. So if you guys haven't seen that yet, I'm going to do my little pyramid abs routine and I did this a couple days ago and it literally killed my abs like my abs were seriously so sore and it's really hard for me to get my abs to be sore. DOMS which is delayed onset of muscle soreness does not necessarily correlate to the effectiveness of a workout so you know when you go to the gym or maybe do a home workout or something you feel really sore the next day that's you experiencing DOMS. DOMS are usually caused not always but usually caused by the introduction of a new stimulus so if you do a new movement or a new train technique or like intensify something on the Design, something new it is potentially more likely to make you more sore i wouldn't use soreness as an accurate representation or measurement of how effective your training has been are you progressing yes are you looking better yes are you feeling better yes sore or not you're making great progress if you want perfect abs just do this Again, I don't know if that's a joke or not, but if you want perfect abs, do this. What one considers to be perfect may not necessarily align with what another individual considers to be perfect. Perfection, if it does exist, is subjective. I'm going to put in some 
whey protein powder and I do one scoop. Including whey protein into your smoothies is actually a really good way of getting additional protein in. Whole foods will always be better than supplements, in my opinion. Do I think supplements have a place? Absolutely. Do I consume supplements? Absolutely. I personally consume about 250 grams of protein a day. Does that mean you should? Absolutely not. Can I get that from whole foods? I can. Is it bloody difficult? It is. So I have a scoop of protein. Do I think you need to spend mass amounts of money on supplements? Absolutely not. If you are going to invest in supplements, again, they should align with your goals. Another note is I do appreciate during Daisy's video, she has noted and stated that she is not a nutritionist or dietitian. I appreciate that. It's just these videos can, although I'm sure not intentionally, promote a bit of a mixed and somewhat potentially negative message at times which is essentially normalizing looking or desiring to look like somebody else rather than desiring to look like you and thrive as a human and as an individual. Regarding like cheat days and like full days of eating where people actually go through everything they eat a bit more specifically and maybe eating challenge videos, another can of worms and another topic to address down the line if people would like to see it. As with all my videos, this video is merely my opinion and you have to agree with what I had to say. In fact, you may actually disagree, which is absolutely fine. But now that's done, we're gonna talk about the common question of the week. I love doing deadlifts and deadlift variations, but my grip will give out before the rest of my body, especially my non-dominant hand. What do you do to strengthen grip without using lifting straps? Great question, also very common. Realistically, because there are so many muscles involved in the deadlifts so you're utilizing your posterior chain, your grip is very much likely to give out before anything else because you look at how small the forearms and the kind of like grip related muscles are in comparison to your posterior chain, there's a big difference. If you want to deadlift, you can work on the hook grip, which is essentially gripping over your thumbs like so, really hurts probably best for lower reps not so much volume work you can always mix grip as well which is one arm over and one arm under like so regarding specific grip exercises you can do prolonged holds where you essentially set the rack really high stand up like almost like you're doing a struggle like the top of deadlift and just hold the bar until failure and try and progress by holding it for longer and longer each time you can wrap a towel around the bar to make the bar thicker unless you have access to an axle bar which is a thick bar then you're laughing, you could use that. Dead hangs, which someone did actually suggest in the comment section, which is a great movement. It's actually hang from a bar, like a pull-up bar, feet off the floor for as long as you can. Your forearms will be screaming, Alicia Keys, my forearms are on fire. I'm not gonna sing because no one wants to hear that. You can do plate pinches where you hold like 2.5 kilo plates or like five pound plates in your fingertips and like maybe put three or four of them and pinch them for as long as you can. Oh, farmer's walks are another great one. Hold two heavy dumbbells by your side. And by heavy, I mean relative to you, what you deem to be heavy because strength is relative. And maybe walk 20 meters there, 20 meters back as many times as you can while holding the dumbbells before you feel like you have to drop them. But hopefully those few exercises help you. But that's it. That's the video. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate 300 likes. If you haven't already, I would love it if you did subscribe to the channel and perhaps click the bell icon next to it to get notified when I upload it twice a week. And if you do have any questions you want me to answer for comment question of the week, drop a question down below in the comment section and I shall answer it in the next video. Regardless of whether you agreed or disagreed with what I had to say, I'd love to hear your opinions down below in the comment section and I appreciate your time. So thank you for tolerating the video.